Hello, hello. This is Queenie. I'm out here with the Ron with 112. Well, we're going to open up with um, one special question that everybody's talking about in social media right now. Right. Um, well, how did Aretha Franklin influence you? Aretha's a big thing now. Right. Well, you know, first of all, uh, rest in peace and my condolences to my family, everybody, all the loved ones. Um, for me, I think it was, you know, my grandmother would listen to Aretha all the time. But I think I became a fan the first time I saw her at the piano. Because I didn't, I didn't have no clue. I just knew she had this big, magnificent, magnificent voice. But I didn't really know that she could play the keys. So when I seen her playing the piano and singing, like it was just, it was magic. I mean, she was, you know, doing the riffs on the keyboard and still doing the runs and stuff with her voice. And I just thought that was amazing. And then from there, you know, I became a fan and I started like kind of studying a lot of her work and just learning things from her vocally and musically. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people are talking about her now, and um, I just remember a lot of songs. Right. <laughs> that, like, that was my thing. My mom used to play that one. Yeah, we used to clean to that one. Classic, classic. <laughs> I think my favorite Aretha song is Ain't No Way. Ain't No Way. Oh, that's, yeah. That's my joy right there. Yeah, that's what that's too. She has so many, and even on the gospel side. Yeah, yeah, which I'm just kind of finding out about that. Because I was hearing it in her playing, and I think that's really what you know, gravitated me to her. I'm like, okay, this this piano that she's doing, it sounds like the church, and that's where I came up in the church. And most of my influences for singing and music was gospel related. So that's um, but I just really found that out recently that she was like singing gospel music too. Yeah, which is cool. Because my grandmother, um, when when she found out she passed, she was like, oh yeah, we can just take us to church, just take us to the church, <laughs> and all her music, and she right. really did. So you, you ended up in church at the end. At the end of the day, you had to go there while <laughs> if she was in the room, right? Yeah. So I know you are you are working on your own project or promoting your own project now, yes. um, which I was a part of because I did say some challenge. Right, right, that's right. You got down, you got down. It's, it's, it's low right there, it's low. That pulled right over my kids. It's like, we're going to do it right now because you ain't going to never do it. And we was right. in a neighborhood that I know nothing about and we out there dancing in the street. Oh my goodness. So yeah, that was fun. Um, and I saw where you were reposting a lot of them to a lot of people. How did that make you feel? Um, it was, you know, it was kind of overwhelming at one point because, you know, I was just kind of playing with it. And I was like, well, if it catch on, then I'll just repost it. And then people start doing it and, and they never stop. And even when I went on to the second single, people are still, you know, doing the Say Some channel. Like, even to this day, like, I just actually reposted one from the radio station where, you know, um, Somebody that was working at the station played the song on hashtag say some challenge and was, you know, playing the song for me in the studio. So I was like, wow, this is, you know, this is kind of overwhelming a little bit, humbling, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's also exciting too. Because I said, he ain't going to, he ain't going to post I mean, with all the women in the world that was doing the say some challenge, why would you find mine? <laughs> right. I but I was yeah. your hope and I was like, yes. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, yes, when you did it, you should have. The celebration was real. That's what's up. Yeah. I think we pulled over on that day too. Okay, that's awesome. Because I got awesome. out of dance at that point. At that point. Um, but how do you um, manage? Because I know you're out with the '90s, you know, with the 112 group, and then you're doing your your um, solo thing. How yeah. are you managing the two? How are you balancing it? Well, for me, like, um, it's it's pretty easy. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about schedule. And as long as you have a schedule, you can kind of do it as you need to. You know what you're doing, you can kind of plan around it. So it's, it's not really difficult. And as far as uh, me actually doing music for myself, like I've always been kind of like a songwriter and a producer. And I always just had music laying around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I was always producing something. So if I ran into one of my industry friends and they hadn't seen me in four months, you know, whether I had an album coming out or whether we had an album coming out as a group or not, like, they let, let me hear some music. And they know I got some music. And there you go. I want to play. So, I mean, I got to a point where I was like, well, you know, maybe it's time you know, for me to put this music out up under my own name. Because a lot of my biggest records were up under other artists' names. You know, 112, Keisha Cole, Usher, Kelly Price, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I think, you know, I contributed to the careers of you know, my fellow musician community for a while. And now, now it's time for me to figure out what I want to say individually and put my own music out there. So. 
that's, that's kind of what I'm doing. And you kind of draw us in almost every night. <laughs> <laughs> Going I, by. I mean, I've been trying, you know, I mean, that's, that's really what I love to do is just use music to make people happy. And I think, like, just being a kid in, in elementary school and, and my grandmother had a piano on the porch, I would learn to play the songs by ear uh, from the radio and oh, take them. play by ear so you yeah. can't go to class? Well, I did at, 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 some, at some point, you know, I did, but I really didn't take it seriously at the time, unfortunately, because I just I just didn't really apply myself in it. And, uh, and honestly, playing by ear came so much easier. Like, I could just listen to a song and play it, so I didn't really take that aspect of it seriously. I never really truly, you know, got that skill. But I would play the songs um, off the radio by ear, take them to school the next day, play them for the kids, and just seeing their reaction to it, mm. that's what drove me. You know, this is, I'm like, wow, this is what makes me happy this could be my purpose in life this could be what you know I, I do so I mean and even still to this day it's the same so when I see that you better say some challenge and, and, yeah. and it just makes give everybody those happy vibes you know that's <laughs> that's why I do what I do you know? and my son put it together I said come on make me look like no fool because <laughs> I know some of them steps was looking kind of <laughs> <something. laughs> all I can do is do like this right, right, right. all I can do is do the cute walk <laughs> yeah, that's all right ain't nothing wrong with that but I was excited about that. So, um, what do you think about the music industry today? Like, how how it is right now versus what it was when you entered? I think the main things that I see in the music game that's different is like, first of all, the way music is distributed is different. And that, and that changes every few years. I mean, I don't know what possibly could be next because, you know, it started, you know, records and the tracks and cassettes and CDs and, and it went from CDs to doing MP3s and what we are in digitally now. So, I mean, I don't know what could be next, but that's the main thing is the distribution. And I think, you know, for up and coming artists, the resources. Like, mm -hmm. like, I started singing in the seventh grade and I started taking it seriously in the seventh grade. And I didn't get an opportunity, you know, to have a record deal or share it with the world until I was like in the twelfth grade. So, like now, yeah, now. I, they have access to way more resources than what we had. Like, we was, I say we was the last of the Mohicans in terms of artists that was actually singing on the street corner, mm -hmm. looking for somebody who had that right card and that right hookup. And so I think now, the second thing I see is the resources that new artists have. Like, these resources that y'all have, y'all are lucky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To have the internet and to have this social media phenomenon, you know, to kind of share your music with people and build your fan base one by one. I mean, from, from my day, people would pay, you know, millions of dollars in the market mm -hmm. to be able to have somebody in Charlotte, North Carolina, or you know, Mississippi, or New York to hear that music. You know what I'm saying? That, that cost money, you know, back in the day where I was from. So I think those are the main two things I see is like the distribution is different and it's way more resources to kind of get your career started. So what do you think about R&B? Do you think it still exists in the young generation or do you think it's... Uh... Yeah, I think, I, think, <laughs> I think it's here. I think, you know, I think there's always seems to be a, sometimes a lapse in communication between the older generation and the young generation, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, we had a song, just for example, we had a song in the 90s called I'm a Play, you know what I'm saying? Which basically was about you weren't ready to settle down, you was doing your thing, and you didn't want to be bothered with no girl until you were basically ready to settle down. And in our day, you know, nobody shunned upon that as not being an R&B song because it wasn't talking about love, you know what I'm saying? But then um, the new cast, they'll come out with a song saying, you know, the girls ain't loyal. Which yeah. is kind of, we, <laughs> we had the same concept. Like when I was singing this song, now I said, yeah. you know, yeah. what is this? Numbers in your pocket. I remember when you used to throw these things away. Mm -hmm. So what's that? You, you getting on the girl about her loyalty. So Chris Brown, he does the same thing. And now people say it's not R&B, but... We're singing about the same thing, but we have to be kind of in tune with the young generation so that we can receive their message. If we have, you know, if we're not in tune with what their message is and how they're communicating, then we'll start to say, well, if this ain't R&B, you know what I'm saying? August Alcina had a song called Don't Go Looking For Love. You know, he came, he said, hey, I'm this, I'm that, I'm out here, I'm doing my thing. You know, we can kind of kick it and be casual and all that. Don't come looking for love. Right. So that's the same sentiment that we were saying with our players. So I really don't think you know, R&B is any different. I think that the young people just have a way of saying the same things that we were saying. And, uh, we just gotta learn how to listen so we can understand what they talk about. They don't, they don't, <laughs> they're they're the definitely saying thing. it differently. Yeah. <laughs> they're definitely doing that. Um, so, 
So how did you stay so long in the business? Like, what, what kept you going? I mean, I know it's from the 90s and now you're right. here. Well, I think for me, this is this is my passion and it's what I love to do. But it's, it's, I also feel like it, it calls me. Like, even the times that I felt like, okay, man, I don't want to do this no more. Like, I can never get away from it. Like, it would always just... times like that? Yeah, it was times where I felt like... You're about to crush those fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was times I felt like that. You know, I was going through things personally in my life, and I just felt like, well, maybe I don't want to do music anymore. Maybe I want to do something else. And, and I would feel like that for like a week or two, or maybe a month. And then it, it would just call me. Like, I would hear another song in the back of my head, and, and I was like, man, I got this song in my head. It's been in my head for like three weeks. Let me just go see what it sounds like. <laughs> let me go write it down. Let me go make the beat. Let me go record the verses. All right, let me listen back. It's like, yeah, I, I got to do this. This is my calling. Oh, you know so you're producing too? Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. you produce? Yeah, so I make it. Yeah, and that's what I was explaining uh, the other day. So a lot of people didn't know that I produce. Oh. And so I, I do the beats as, you know, that's the, the terminology beat. that they use. I make the beats. So <laughs> I made the beat to Cupid. I made the beat to anywhere. It's over now. Uh, Keisha Cole, I should cheat. B.I.D. and R. Kelly, love me tonight. I mean, to be to my current single, Say Something, so you know, I've been doing that for, since I was about 17. Okay, okay. It's more to this story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so um, you're performing tonight at the, the Palm Garden, so you're the Palm Garden experience. Well, you know, we're going to do a little something. It's, it's, honestly, it's more of a listening party, you know, to kind of play the music, but like right perform the night. Touch it, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so all I have to do is invite you to my birthday party and just do this. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I can't be down there tonight with the microphone and not sing a song, so it's definitely going okay, down. Okay, that's that. All right, I'll have to keep that in mind because I am having a birthday party next year in June, you know, so invite me. Okay, that's what's up. Do that. <laughs> the bitch invited to Queen's birthday party. That's what's up. I haven't up. found a venue yet. I'm sure you'll never work that out. You got some okay. time? Yeah. Well, I am so glad you took out time and your busy schedule to come out here and talk to me. No problem. I have like inside a fan trying <laughs> not to show it on the outside. I appreciate it. So I am that. very excited about this, especially since I get to say something. I thought I was a celebrity. Yeah, I'm going to have to post it again. I so. thought I was a girl. <laughs> you, when you posted that, I was like, shoot. Y'all ain't even tell me nothing. I call all my friends, girl, go to his face on there. <laughs> <laughs> go to his face on there. <laughs> That's what's up. Because nobody up. believed it. Right. Because right. you figure a lot of people do these challenges. So the uh -huh. chances of somebody seeing mine and posting it, you know, right. and I'm a, just the old lady doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, you got it. And you heard it first on Music Class and Fashion. Ron Jones, 112. Hi, this is Queenie. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, subscribe. Or you can follow me on all social media at Dash and Chit Chat. Until next time, I'll be chit chatting with you later.